SIPOC diagram that is supplier, input, process, output and customer. So in this video we are going to look at what is SIPOC diagram, how to construct a SIPOC diagram. We also look at few examples as well. So please watch this video till the end. Forget to like, comment and share with all your friends as well and in case if you are visiting my channel for the first time, don't forget to subscribe as well and to hit that bell icon as well for all the notifications from digital e-learning on my upcoming next videos. Hello and welcome back to yet another video series from digital e-learning. I hope you will like this video. So what is SIPOC diagram? SIPOC stands for supplier, input, process, output and customer. SIPOC diagram supplier who provides input input what goes into process process how the process is performed output what goes comes out of process customers who receive the in output or the end users SIPOC diagram does not contain much detail about the process that is why it is often known as high level process map it is a form of process mapping that visually documents a business process from beginning to end. It provides a holistic view to the top management as well as the executive leadership so that they are on the same page. It is simple but yet effective method and can help identify problems and isolate areas that are not needed or add little value. And in Six Sigma, SIPOC is often used during defined phase of its DMAC improvement steps. Let us look at all the elements of a SIPOC diagram one by one. We will start with first with supplier. This is the party that supplies product or services to the process. Your supplier should be able to address the needs or specification of your input. They can be both internal or external parties. They can be the supplier of raw material or knowledge, skill and information. Next what we have is the inputs. Inputs are the raw materials that are used in the process and the main components of your input. Input of a process is all about materials, service, information. You can have multiple input source and all can play a vital role. Next is the process. Process is a structured step used to convert input into output. A SIPOC high level process map shows the whole process in 4 or 5 major process steps. On top of that, everybody involved in the process is familiar with their own actions and it is easier to talk to each other when something doesn't go right. Next is the output. Output are the end product of a process. They are the products which you will pass on to your customer. Your output should always mirror the company's goal and positioning in the market. In addition to the end product, waste products are also the examples of a output. The whole business depends upon output. After investing so much time in input and processing, if it doesn't go up to the mark, the output will fail. Last but not the least are the customers. Customers or the end users of a product are the people or entities that are willing to pay for what you are offering. And customer again can be both internal and external. Internal customers are the stakeholders. The process improvement projects team run for them. And for external customers or end customers who uses the services or the end product who decides the end product fit the expectations or not. Customer requirements are important throughout the process. And when the output doesn't meet with the customer requirement, quality cannot be guaranteed. SIPOC diagram has a pretty straightforward structure. Its whole purpose is to present the information at the core of a process in the simplest way possible. Be very clear about where the process start and where the process end. This should align with and help you define your project scope. Keep the project process map at the highest level. Don't be tempted to deep dive at this level. To construct a simple SIPOC diagram, start with table with 5 columns. List them as supplier, input, process, output and customer. And then start with the process. If you have decided to construct a SIPOC diagram, you should already probably know what your process steps are going to be. Write them in the middle of a process and I, you can either list them or draw them using a flowchart to make it easy to comprehend. When completing this step, keep a few things in mind. Make sure that you know exactly where you are starting and ending point of a process. If you don't know, then this can mess up the whole diagram once you are moved to next other columns. 
don't go into too much detail remember cypoc is a high level process map and it's designed to give you bird's eye overview of a process next you need to identify the output of a process as we go with the previous step focus on key output of a process in this step write down the outputs your goal is to avoid categorizing your outputs into good or bad that's not the point of this diagram next identify the customers it could be your internal customers it could be your external customers so in this gap list the people who benefit from the process next we identify the inputs here you write down inputs required for the process to function properly just like every previous step focus on most important steps you can list on four to six main inputs finally it is time to list down the suppliers so suppliers could be your vendors producers management or customers so here the process flow like process output customer input and supplier that is your overview of cypoc diagram how to construct so let us take one example here so we will the task what we have is that we will make a coffee and we will use this tool cypoc that is supplier input process output and customer so we'll start with listing down all the process steps so the process steps in making the coffee are we will boil water add coffee to mug add boiling water and milk to mug and finally when it is ready you serve it so what are the output that you will get is that cup of coffee a mug full of coffee who could be my potential customers in this case it could be your husband your wife your boyfriend or girlfriend or it could be your customers also so what are the inputs that you need for getting a cup of coffee so i need a kettle water mug coffee and milk and from where i can get this input you can go to any corner shop or any walmart or any other shop where you can get this input this is a typical example of a cypoc diagram let us take another example of a pizza process and try to use this tool cypoc diagram so we'll list on first the process prepare dough add sauces add cheese and toppings bake in oven and remove from the oven and serve These are my process steps of making a pizza. What 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 is the output that I get? Is a pizza. Customers could be my dine-in customers or take-away customers, and my input that I need is a dough, cheese, oven, sauce, and toppings. And who who could be my suppliers? Again, the corner shop, Walmart, or any other source from where you can get all these inputs. This is another example of a uh, cypoc diagram. Where we have used the pizza delivery process. Let us look at some of the benefits that we get from using this tool, Cypoc diagram. The first benefit that we have, it enables all team members to view the process in the same light, visually communicate the project scope at a high level, identify key input and output of a process, begins to identify gaps such as. inputs that we don't need but still receive output that customer don't want but receive anyway process steps that are completed but does not add any value and finally verify input matches the output for upstream process output matches input for downstream process let us do a quick recap of what we have learned So you will start from the customers by getting the VUC, that is voice of customer, through surveys and interviews, or simply projecting needs through feasibility studies. Upon reaching a clear idea of target customer need, you drive a product to address the needs. When you already have product in mind, the next step is to create a process that will generate that product. Bear in mind that the requirement of the output should be major consideration when designing the process. After establishing the process the next thing is to think about are the inputs and things that you are will need for the process to be executed Lastly determine the suppliers that can provide you the necessary input again the input requirement must be followed for the whole process to work and bring favorable business all the elements in cypoc should be aligned and support the ultimate goal of a business 
So that is all I have on this sidewalk diagram. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching Digital E-Learning. Have a fantastic day ahead.